You're listening to the Concord Podcast. I'm Kurt, joined as always by Taylor and Noah, and we are the pastors of Concord Baptist Church. Welcome back to the Concord Podcast. I am glad to be back in person with Taylor and Noah. Noah is finally out of quarantine. Most people can quarantine for two weeks. It took Noah a solid month. Um, Just could not seem to get out from under it. It wasn't his fault. But it's (laughs) nice to have you back uh, in person. Um, We'll be honest with you guys. We shot a a 40-minute podcast yesterday and uh, got ready to upload it and found out that there was no audio. Uh, so we switched the topic up a little bit to make sure we're not uh, just sort of running through things. But we thought it might be fun uh, just to have a, an episode focused on the things that we have been enjoying over the last few months. We all need things that kind of feed our soul. Um, we all need things that um, you know kind of break up the, the monotony, things that we enjoy, whether it be hobbies or activities, things like that. So uh, we're going to talk about books, TV shows, movies, music, um, things that we've just drawn encouragement from, sustenance from. Um, That's the goal of this podcast. So Taylor, what has been encouraging you? To no shock to anybody who's watching or listening to this, I've been listening to a lot of music. Uh, I know, right? Gasp. <laughs> Gasp on three. Gangster rap, right? Gangster rap, absolutely. I'm more of an 80s guy when it comes to my rap. I understand. Um, I understand. You know, I, before the heavy chains and the... Yeah, I like the big boombox style oh, on your you. shoulder. So you're not so much a two chains kind of oh, guy. Oh, for those of you that do not know who two chains is, thank you. Um, That's right. I know rappers. So... <laughs> we... Man of many talents. I am. Yeah. Um, I've, I, I've, over the last several weeks, I've heard, I probably would say, three songs that have just rocked me, uh, both uh, emotionally and spiritually and, 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 and from a conviction standpoint. Like, they've been just kind of all-encompassing in their lyrics. And, and so this is a really good opportunity for you to, uh, as listeners and viewers, to hear these titles now and you can look them up and and because i promise you you will hear these uh in in the next few months uh the first one being a song called thy mercy my god um by sandra mccracken uh an artist that i don't i don't know how familiar most of you at home are with her, la- it, but, her uh, last name is spelled mc kraken mccracken just so you guys know how to spell that it's a great song, though. It is incredible. That was very MC helpful. Yes, that's um, right. But yeah, it is a wonderfully written song, and it's one of those that we will definitely uh, in- include in the service and has really spoken to me uh, recently. The next one is going to be a song called Sovereign Over Us mm. that I didn't hear for the first time until like three weeks ago, two weeks ago, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, Kurt has heard it for a little while. and um, Yeah. A mentor of mine turned me on to it. It's 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 a very impactful song, um, and the third of which we have already done, um, but it's King of Kings. Um, we've you've heard it for the past. I guess uh, you've heard it four weeks in a row, and you'll hear it again uh, very soon. But it will be one of those where we we sing routinely because the words are so appropriate and so true. One of my favorite lyrics during this time is in that song. Um, this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall, shall not, not fade. Fail. Is it fade, fade. or fail? fade? Yeah, yeah, I should probably know that. But the, the whole yep. focus of it, I mean, especially in a time like this where, where churches are you know worried about uh, people coming back and losing people and yeah. you know comparing themselves to other churches and are people going to go you know somewhere else because we're doing too much or not enough and it's just sort of a, a fraught time especially for uh, for folks who belong to a church um, and it's just a reminder that man like the gospel that we believe is unconquerable because the king of the gospel is unconquerable that's right and uh, I mean it's, it, it should be very important it should be a, a, a high up on the importance list of things that we sing that, that carry us through those times at church. Absolutely. Like if, if you listen to them, that's great. But if you sing them congregationally, you know, yeah. the, could, there was a time where I, we didn't get to sing congregationally anything. That's right. That's um, a good point. And so when we join 
uh, that 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 unifying voice. It really matters what we're singing. Oh, Christmas is coming too. And, oh, uh, yeah. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. That's another one that's been sticking with me. Um, man, joyful, joyful, we adore thee is a great not only Christmas hymn but just hymn in general. So, as a side note, in your personal opinions, when is it appropriate to start singing Christmas music? Uh, first day of fall. Um, Unless you're a choir director, in which then it's he hasn't even resurrected. And they're sending me music about his birth. That's right. <laughs> I mean, April and May. If you don't have your Christmas stuff at least narrowed down, you're behind the ball. Gotcha. But nice. for the rest of us mortals, yeah. Uh, when is when is the appropriate time to put up Christmas decorations, Noah? Uh, my family uh, has gotten earlier and earlier the past few years and now that we have a baby i'm worried it will continue to move that direction last year we put them up the day after the fall festival which would have been november 1st november 1st um we used to wait until thanksgiving um i'm slightly worried that october 15th they'll be put up this year but i'm gonna fight against that as hard as i can i lost that battle last year i got you we were up two weeks before halloween last year and uh (laughs) It was a victory that it was. It was a loss that I conceded, but it was a victory in the long run because it made my wife happy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we are a uh, day after Halloween family. Um, you know, I, I we used to be uh, first day of December, um, but I, I heard someone, uh, it's our our women's college director uh, at Lakeview, say it's so much trouble. Uh, to get it all down and decorated, I better daggum be able to uh-huh. enjoy it for more than 25 days. That's right. So I, I think that that's right. Do you have a preference on when they come down? Because I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, usually somewhere around New Year's ish. Uh, if it's if it gets into like the, you know, the the latter part of bowl season, it feels a little bit out of place. Bowl season. Yeah. Bowl there bowl we season. go. <laughs> that's, that's the first couple of days in January for those of you who need to be saved. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> For those those who don't sport like me. That's right. That's right. Well, Taylor, anything else been going on with you that you've enjoyed? Uh, yeah, I've read. I've gotten some some light reading done. I do not read near as much as Noah and Kurt do. Um, that is probably a a uh, downfall of mine. But um, a couple of books that I've I've gotten to read through. One spoke to the importance of congregational singing, called "Praying Twice" by uh, Brian Wren. Uh, he's a theological professor and. If you want something challenging that 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 kind of brings to it brings to your mind some thoughts on why we sing congregationally, and then there are ways that we sing the incorrectly congregationally, mm. and, um, and and so it, it's pretty interesting. Uh, and then a book that I'm I'm almost through called The Way of Worship by Michael Neal, who is the worship leader at Preston Wood Church. Mm-hmm. If you do not know who Preston Wood is. Do yourself a favor. I won't say go click here, but I might say you could click somewhere you below. Look them up on this, iTunes. Yeah, or, yeah, you go. Yeah. The Preston Wood Church, uh, the Preston Wood Church, and they, their choir is uh, amazing. And yeah, uh, so I really enjoyed his books as well. But yeah, that's um, that's been the newest. <laughs> that's been the kind of the 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 chain that has pulled. Good deal. Pulled me through. Awesome, Noah. What about you, man? So I, I will confess, I have never been much of a reading person. Um, prior to Kurt coming to this church, there was probably about seven books on my shelf I had read. Um, and then, you know, it's not true anymore! No, no, it's not. Because when you walk in the office every day and see Kurt uh, pacing around his office with a book in his face, um, kind of makes you want to read a little bit. How and many books have you read this year now? Uh, 55. That's correct. It's Which awesome. is much better than my last year of 10. Does he pace around like Abraham Lincoln? Like I can just see a top hat four <laughs> score. And I mean, kind of. <laughs> one it's one in AirPod face. in. Boy. It, 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 yeah, because I'm usually on a phone call. It, it's to cover up the ugly. Uh, those oh. of you who are listening, you can't see me covering my face halfway with the book. But that, that's why, mainly. But I've been trying to read a lot of new stuff. And this last week, I did something I've never done. I went back and read a book that I had already read. It was one I read in eighth grade uh, called My Side of the Mountain. I don't know who wrote it, but it's about a boy who runs away from home to live in the woods permanently in the uh, Catskill Mountains in New York. Awesome. Um, And it was really cool because it was a really short book, really easy read, but brought back memories. So if you've never went and reread a book, I recommend it. Awesome. Good deal. What, Um, What else? Any movie ah, or anything? Ah, yes. Uh, there is a movie me and Elena watched just a couple months ago. You can get it at the Red Box, I think, called Knives Out. 
It is a mystery movie in which someone has died and, you know, classic detective comes in to figure out what happened. Um, full of twists, full of turns. One of the best movies I've seen Literally. this year. Yeah, it's uh, it's very Hitchcock-esque. Uh, yeah. If you enjoy Alfred Hitchcock. See, I was going to go Sherlock-esque. Well, With more it, humor, though. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. It's got the suspense of Hitchcock. It's got the, it's very much a whodunit um, and not at all predictable. Um so yeah, awesome man. Um, books. For, yeah, so for me, uh, <laughs> obviously a good number of books, but all all fun books this time. Like there's no no deep dense you know uh, academic stuff in here. These are just books that I've been enjoying recently. Bill Bryson. Uh, if you've never read a book by Bill Bryson, he's a travel writer. Uh, he writes a lot about. Um, just places he's been, he's hilarious. He's one of the funniest writers I've ever read. And my all-time favorite book he's written is called In a Sunburned Country. It's about his travels through Australia. It's just hysterical. Uh, I mean, yeah, I have pulled muscles laughing at Bill Bryson's writing. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, two books of poetry uh, that have been really, really, um, I don't know, just encouraging, uh, nourishing. Uh, there's a book called Good Poems for Hard Times. It's edited by Garrison Keeler, who some of you know uh, led uh, the radio program uh, Prairie Home Companion for many years. Uh, but he has collected this book of poems uh, that were read over his radio show uh, called Good Poems for Hard Times. And then a book uh, written actually by a pastor's wife. Uh, her name is Rachel Joy Welcher, um, called Two Funerals and Easter. Uh, if poetry is uh, something that when you hear that you go, ugh then you need to read this book. Like It's easy to understand. How did you it know is, what I just said? Yeah, that's right. Inside your head. It is. I mean, they're, they, are, um, they are not, you know, out there, hard to understand. It's, it's just gut-level poetry. Really, really good. Two Funerals and Easter. You can get that on Amazon as well. Uh, best novel I've read in a long time, uh, Peace Like a River uh, by Leif Inger. He's a believer, but uh, just a... a Leif Inger? Leif Inger, yes, okay. E-N-G-E-R, um, just a, a wonderful novel. Um, and then, because it is political season, uh, I've read two books here recently on politics. One is called The Residence, um, and it's uh, inside the private world of the White House. So uh, the president and the first family live in the residence at the White House, and this is uh, the account of people who have cool. worked there. Um, going all the way back, I believe, to Jimmy Carter was uh, um, how far back the interviews go, so... Um, it, it's just an interesting look at, you know, we see the Bushes and the Clintons and the Obamas and um, the, the Trumps are not in here because it was written uh, before uh, President Trump came into office. But just an interesting look inside uh, their lives. The Reagans are talked about quite a bit as well. That's pretty neat because uh, a lot of times, you know, you are, the shows on TV, they don't really picture that, that you don't get a whole a good idea of what goes on in the, you get the Oval Office, you get the, the maybe the, the Situation Room. And, yeah. Uh, like West Wing, they don't have hardly anything. Yeah, about just the about private the, side of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's an incredible book, uh, really interesting. And then if you're into biographies, let me make a a strong recommendation for Robert Caro's biography series on Lyndon Johnson, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, president that uh, came to power after President Kennedy was shot. Uh, but many historians trace kind of the mistrust of political power, uh, specifically the mistrust of the presidency, back to Lyndon Johnson. And so if, uh, if you, like me, are sort of tempted to go, oh my goodness, you know, when did politics get so crazy and politicians become so sleazy? Um, Lyndon Johnson's part of that answer. And uh, <laughs> Robert Caro won the Pulitzer for, um, for this book. Uh, this is the first in a series of four. Uh, but they are page turners. It reads like a movie script. Um, it's just remarkably interesting. Uh, for a man who you know was uh, president in the 60s, he could have been president today. Uh, it's just a fascinating book. So highly recommend that. And then the last book. And the most important is Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. That's a book that we're fixing to read as a staff. Uh, if you want a book that will drive home into your marrow uh, how Jesus loves his people in affectionate, non-academic terms, uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful book. So cannot recommend that highly enough. It has um, probably been the most important book I've read this year. So there's my, uh, there's my book list for you guys. So last night was a big night That's for true. all That's of true. us in the South. That's right. Um, 
Uh, care to elaborate? The Braves clinched the NL East. <laughs> they did. Which means that uh, the, the earth is healing uh, and all is going to be okay. Yeah. Um, because baseball, uh, in making its comeback... We have pumpkin spice, the Braves are on top, and the leaves are crunchy. I and, mean, And SEC football starts this, this Saturday. This weekend. Mm, absolutely. So we can praise God for all of those things. Uh, to whom all blessings flow. Yes, and that includes all manner of sporting events. So, uh, with that said, we hope you are enjoying uh, some of these things that we are enjoying as well. Uh, we'll have on the website, uh, in, the, in the resources page, links to all the things we've been talking about. The movies, the songs, uh, the books. And I uh, hope you will maybe pick up a few of those. Listen to the songs, watch, uh, watch Knives Out read some of these books and, and, and enjoy them alongside of us. We'd love also to hear uh, what you've been enjoying, things that have been encouraging to you. Um, so text us, write us an email. Leave a comment. Us. That's right. Uh, we would love to hear it. God bless you, and we will talk to you soon.